In this video, we are going to learn about the procedure tonsillectomy. Tonsillectomy is defined as surgical removal or the surgical excision of the palatine tonsils. The indications of tonsillectomy are divided into three types. Absolute, relative and as a part of any other operation surrounding. The absolute indications are recurrent infections of the throat involving the tonsils peritonsillar abscess, tonsillitis causing febrile seizures in cases of the hypertrophy of the tonsils which causes airway obstruction, difficulty in deglutition, interference with speech and in cases of suspected malignancy that means in cases of unilateral enlargement of tonsil that is lymphoma in children or the epidermoid carcinoma in adults. So any suspicion of malignancy can also be an absolute indication for tonsillectomy. Relative indications include diphtheria carriers who do not respond to antibiotic doses, streptococcal carriers, they may be source of infection to others. So tonsillectomy is usually done in cases of diphtheria and streptococcal carriers. Chronic tonsillitis cases which may lead to bad taste or bad breath from the mouth and with recurrent infections of streptococcal tonsillitis usually seen in patients with valvular heart diseases and as a part of other operations like the pallidopharyngeoplasty which is usually done for sleep apnea syndrome glossopharyngeal neurectomy so in glossopharyngeal neurectomy the tonsillectomy is done first and the tonsil is removed then the glossopharyngeal or the ninth nerve is found in the bed of the tonsil. To know the anatomy of the palatine tonsil, you can click on the I button and as a part of removal of the styloid process. In cases of Eagle syndrome, that means the styloid process is usually bigger than the normal. In this case also, the tonsil is removed. Contraindications are the conditions in which the procedure must be avoided. So the hemoglobin level less than 10 gram percent in any surgery, presence of acute upper respiratory tract infection, children under the age of 3 years, in cases of cleft palate, it may be overt or submucous, in cases of bleeding disorders, the tonsillectomy must be avoided like leukemia and hemophilia. At the time of epidemic of polio, uncontrolled systemic diseases or when the woman patient is menstruating. Before doing tonsillectomy, the enlargement of tonsil is graded. So usually it is of 4 grades. In grade 0, the tonsillar enlargement is not visible to the naked eye and tonsil do not reach the tonsillar pillars. In grade 1 plus, the tonsil is enlarged up to less than 25% of its actual size. When the tonsil fills less than 25% of the transverse oropharyngeal space, which is measured in between the two anterior tonsillar pillars of both sides, grade 2 plus is when the tonsil is enlarged from 25% to 49%. And here, the tonsil fills less than 50% of the transverse oropharyngeal space and grade 3 plus is when the tonsillar enlargement is greater than 50 to 74%. In this, tonsil fills less than 75% of the transverse oropharyngeal space. In the grade 4 plus is when the tonsillar enlargement is greater than 75%. Here, the tonsil fills more than 75% of the transverse oropharyngeal space. The tonsils of both the sides may be even touching each other. So they may also be named as kissing tonsils. So these are the grading of tonsillar enlargement. Now let's learn about the procedure. To initiate the procedure, first the patient must be kept in a position. The most common and the most important position for this procedure tonsillectomy is the rose position. So as you can see it in this diagram, the patient is kept supine with the head extended by placing a pillow or the sandbag beneath the shoulders. This position is referred as the rose position. 
Advantage of this position is the larynx lies at a higher level than the oral cavity. So there will not be any risk of aspiration. And due to this extension of the neck, there will be excellent exposure of the tonsils and the both hands of surgeons can be set free. And hyperextension of this position must be avoided because it can lead to damage of ligaments and cartilage of vertebral spine behind and it can lead to grizzle syndrome. You can remember this point for next competitive exams. Coming to the techniques used in tonsillectomy, there are usually two methods used, cold method and hot methods. Coming to the cold methods, these are the most commonly used methods in which dissection and snare method is the most commonly seen, guillotine method, intracapsular tonsillectomy with deep rider, harmonic scalpel method using the ultrasound, plasma mediated ablation technique, cryosurgical technique. So these are the cold methods of tonsillectomy. Coming to the hot methods, hot meaning using of electric current like electrocautery, laser tonsillectomy or tonsillotomy, coablation tonsillectomy and the radio frequency tonsillectomy. These are the hot methods. So let's know about the most common method that is the dissection and snare method. It is a cold method of tonsillectomy. Here a mouth gag is introduced which is called as Boyle Davis mouth gag. It is introduced into the mouth and it is opened. It is held in place by the Draffin's bipod. So these are the Draffin's bipod and here will be the Boyle Davis mouth gag. After introduction of these instruments, the tonsil is grasped with a tonsil holding forceps and it is pulled medially. Then an incision is made into the mucous membrane from the tonsil to the anterior pillar. Then a blunt curved scissors may be used to dissect the tonsil from the peritonsillar tissue and it is separated from the upper pole of the tonsil. The tonsil is then held in the upper pole as it is separated from the upper pole and the traction is applied downwards. So this is the upper pole which is already separated by a blunt curve scissors after giving an insertion and from then the tonsil is held from the upper pole and it is dragged downwards and medially by the help of traction. Then dissection is continued in the sides until the lower pole of the tonsil is reached. This completes dissecting the tonsil from the upper pole towards the lower pole. Then this wire loop is tightened and then the pedicel is cut and the tonsil is removed. A gauze is placed into the fossa and pressure is applied for few minutes. This decreases bleeding. After few minutes, the gauze is taken out and the bleeding points are observed and then they are tied with silk. This completes tonsillectomy on one side and this procedure is repeated onto the other side. This is the picture showing the infected tonsil before and after the removal. And after the operation, post-operative care is important. So immediate general care is done by keeping the patient in coma position until fully recovered from anesthesia, watching bleeding points from nose and mouth and checking the vitals. After the full recovery, cold milk or ice cream are given. Sucking of ice cubes gives relief from the pain. Initially, soft foods are given, then they are replaced gradually from soft to solid foods. Plenty of fluids should be encouraged to prevent dehydration. And oral hygiene is important because as tonsils are removed, the patient may be prone for infections. So proper guidelines regarding oral hygiene must be given to the patient. Postoperatively, the patient is given condies or hot water goggles 3 to 4 times a day. Mouthwash with plain water is recommended after every feed. Painkillers or analgesics are given. And this pain can be felt locally in the throat or it can also be referred to the ear. So analgesics like paracetamol are given. And antibiotics. Suitable antibiotics can be given orally or by injection for a week postoperatively. 
and coming to the complications. Complications can be divided as immediate and delayed. Immediate complications meaning the problems that arrive during the surgery and delayed complications include long term effects. So coming to the immediate complications, it is the primary hemorrhage. Primary hemorrhage occurs immediately following the surgery. Reactionary hemorrhage that means it can take place within 24 to 48 hours of the surgery. Tonsillectomy can also cause injury to tonsillar pillars, uvula, soft palate, tongue or the superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx. It may cause injury to teeth. It may lead to aspiration of the blood during the surgery. It may also cause facial edema. So these are the immediate complications of tonsillectomy procedure. Coming to the delayed complications, they may be secondary hemorrhage. The secondary hemorrhage refers to the bleeding which occurs after 24 hours of the surgery. This secondary hemorrhage is usually caused due to the post-operative infection. Delayed complications also include infection. Lung complications due to aspiration of the blood. We can see scarring of the soft palate and the anterior and posterior pillar of pharynx. The tonsillar remnants, if not taken off properly, can also cause recurrent tonsillitis in post tonsillectomy patient and hypertrophy of lingual tonsil can also be seen as a delayed complication. So guys, this is all about the procedure tonsillectomy. We have learned about the cold method that is the dissection and snare method. If you like this video, do subscribe to my channel.